And I want to start by saying I am also on the board of Ripple, which is XRP, a cryptocurrency. But I want to make something very, very clear. Blockchain is here to stay. The train has left the station. You're going to hear me quoted about that all the time. As far as I'm concerned, whether it's fractional real estate, whether it's art, whether it's NFTs, blockchain is not going away. What's up, guys? Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. We're going to dive into some big news today related to XRP and a few other altcoins. Let's kick it off. Okay guys, hope everybody's doing well today and let's get right into the info and we can share a little bit more information at the end of this one. So we have first up shared by Cowboy.Crypto, we have Rosie Rios here. Now she served as the 43rd Treasurer of the United States. And back in 2021, Ripple the company appointed her, the former Treasurer of the US, Rosie Rios, to the Board of Directors. So just a few big names, we have Rosie Rios on the Board of Directors of Ripple, 43rd US Treasurer. We have Don Donahue, the former CEO of the DTCC. This was the Federal Reserve before the Federal Reserve even existed. And he was also the chairman of the GPSG, the Global Payment Steering Group. And FYI, this is RippleNet before RippleNet existed. We have Chris Giancarlo, the former CFTC chairman. Mary Jo White is the former SEC chair, and she is defending Ripple and talking against the SEC during this interview with Fortune. And you can read it right here, but just referring to the SEC, there's no way to sugarcoat it. They're dead wrong legally and factually. What do you think about cryptocurrency as a form of currency? Well, uh, I think the train's already left the station in terms of cryptocurrency. Uh, you may or may not know that I just joined the board of Ripple, and the reason why I chose to, to join that board, it's, in my opinion, one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use. So financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments. So that clip was Rosie Rios, and let's hear this clip shared by Cowboy Crypto right here at the Future Innovation Summit in 2022. Yes, it is my name on the lower left-hand side of U.S. money. So uh, out of the approximately $2 trillion of U.S. currency in circulation worldwide, my name is approximately on $1.8 trillion. So I can honestly say that no one has made more money than I have. And I want to start by saying I am also on the board of Ripple, which is XRP, a cryptocurrency. But I want to make something very, very clear. Blockchain is here to stay. The train has left the station. You're going to hear me quoted about that all the time. As far as I'm concerned, whether it's fractional real estate, whether it's art, whether it's NFTs, blockchain is not going away. So that's a big deal. Out of the two trillion U.S. dollars in circulation worldwide, her name, Rosie Rios, is signed on 1.8 trillion of that. And this is just one example of a heavy hitter defending Ripple and XRP. So for those that don't know, Bob Way is one of the coolest people in the XRP community. He was one of the first five Ripple employees. He's good buddies with David Schwartz and everything like that. And he used to do a lot of interviews back in the day with Alex Cobb, um, Digital Perspectives. And it was just always amazing information. He has great energy and great info. So definitely recommend following Bob at Bob underscore Way and keep tabs on him because usually he's pretty quiet and now he's starting to speak. He's also highlighting the ISO 222 migration for messaging. And he explains the reason this 222 transition, and this is messaging, so all of these financial institutions can utilize the same standard for better interoperability and better efficiency. This transition is extremely helpful to Ripple's bank sales team. This means that every bank is required to implement new technology. Banks hate to change an already working process. Change can introduce new problems, which means bankers get fired. And of course, it costs a lot of time, it costs a lot of mistakes, and a lot of money to build this new infrastructure, and banks really don't care to. Reason being is because they make so much money because of the inefficiencies today in the world of transaction banking. Regardless though, thanks to the crypto asset class and DLT, all of these distributed systems are forcing them, no matter how much they don't want to change, to change because otherwise they would be replaced. This is the number one reason most bank integrations do not happen. New system development is expensive and risky. Mistakes can generate bank losses or fines, and bankers get fired. The person you're negotiating with must have product budget, a development budget, and a risk appetite. With a mandatory 222 change that is happening, the person you are negotiating with only needs to have product budget. Money for development has already been allocated elsewhere, and nobody gets fired for following a mandate, true. That makes the sale a much easier lift for Ripple. 
And remember that Ripple the company joined the ISO 222 standards body back in 2020. Now ISO 222 has been around since 2004. And this is just a universal messaging standard to bring legacy payment infrastructure into the modern world. With the similar standard, you'll have global interoperability if everybody's using the same standard and improved customer experience. In RippleNet, the network has been aligned with the ISO 222 standards from the start. Now back to Bob Way, that being said, bank software sales is still a hard process, especially with the SEC suit still adding FUD to the process. But even if banks wait for a settlement, their 222 upgraded system becomes much easier for Ripple to integrate with them. The biggest impact is going to be that even smaller banks are going to be upgrading their systems. That creates a much larger pool of ODL compatible banks, or banks that are able to use XRP with their on-demand liquidity solution. Smaller banks get the most benefit from on-demand liquidity, which leverages XRP as the bridge asset between currencies, and it lets them cut the larger correspondent banks out of their flow and costs. Now another thing I want to highlight that I highlighted last video, but this is going to go into the next point, is what David Schwartz said a few years ago. If Swift wants to fix payments for us, that's great. It is one less thing that we have to do. Remember, XRP is positioned as a settlement asset. The faster payments are, the more important it is that settlement be fast and cheap. The main reason that Ripple built RippleNet and XCurrent was because payments were too slow for fast, cheap settlement to matter at all. Now you're seeing Swift working on Swift GPI copying XCurrent, which Ripple created. They're doing different things to improve the inefficiencies of payments, better standards, etc. And now we can see this. This just came out a couple weeks ago. Swift Go signups triple. And there's significant progress being made on G20 goals to enhance the cross-border experience. Now this is big. More than 500 banks and 120 countries have signed up to enable fast, transparent, low-value payments using Swift Go. With the goals of better speed, cost, transparency, choice, and access in cross-border transactions. So over the past two years to enable instant, frictionless processing between 4 billion accounts worldwide. Now here's some interesting stats right here, increasing speed. Nearly half of Swift transactions today reach end beneficiaries within 5 minutes, and two-thirds arrive within 1 hour well on the way to G20's target of 75% settling within 60 minutes, within one hour. And this is bringing certainty to payments under $10,000, because some of these payments never even make it to their destination and are sometimes lost entirely. It saved the industry millions each year in cost to fix failed transactions, currently cover 70% of beneficiary accounts in major markets. Now in last video, we went through a swift document talking about the trillions of dollars of the securities market that is going to be tokenized. So just like building the transparency for delivering payments right here through Swift GPI, we have Swift is doing the same for securities. Swift Securities. And they've successfully piloted this year and will be rolled out in 2023, providing unprecedented transparency on the processing of securities transactions after a trade takes place. Now look at this number. Failed settlements cost the industry as a whole an estimated $3 billion each year. Failed settlements cost the industry $3 billion. So we know there's going to be central bank digital currencies. There will be tokenized assets for tokenized security tokens, tokenized commodities, etc. And they could and most likely will be exchanged across DLT and fiat-based systems. In quotes talking about all of these digital islands across the world that can be connected, realizing the technology's full potential. And as I referenced the other day, right here, tokenization is a relatively nascent market. It's young, it's immature, but it has a lot of potential. But the World Economic Forum has estimated it could reach $24 trillion by 2027. And this is referring to the volume, and that is still incredibly high. And as Rosie Rios emphasized for real estate, art, etc., for liquidity and asset fractionalization, this could increase access to investment markets for retail and enable institutional investors to build stronger portfolios. And please remember this quote from David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple. And also remember, for this year, RippleNet's annualized payment volume run rate now exceeds $15 billion. And on-demand liquidity grew over nine times year over year. Now this was back in October. We're going to talk about from now to today, ODL or XRP now enables payouts in 25 payout markets. And we can see one month after that, Ripple expands on-demand liquidity to nearly 40 payout markets. Next up, we have shared by Bedict right here. And remember MoneyGram when they referred to their Ripple partnership in the past and quote said, they're committed to revisiting our relationship in the future. And we can see MoneyGram launches MoneyGram Online or MGO website in Brazil. And this is through another organization now in quotes developed in partnership with Ripple. They're partnered with TravelX. Remember TravelX has the license for using foreign exchange and they're also using on-demand liquidity and XRP. And TravelX is Ripple's major XRP ODL partner bank in Brazil. 
In TravelX Bank right here, the first exclusive Forex bank approved and regulated by the Central Bank of Brazil, focused on e or electronic foreign exchange transactions. And TravelX Bank is the first in the country to operate exclusively in the foreign exchange market, which is huge. Notice, using Ripple's ODL. Next up, from the Blockchain Service Network we have, we're excited to announce that Changu Chain, based on the Casper Protocol or Casper Network, is available on the BSN China portal. So they worked with Casper Labs to adapt it for compliance, allowing Chinese developers to try out more blockchains and spark more innovation. And remember that the Blockchain Service Network, or BSN, is on the Hyperledger Foundation right there alongside Quant, R3, we have Ripple, and Hedera. We also have Casper Labs, you have Deutsche Telekom, IPW, another Casper partner, etc. And speaking of the Blockchain Service Network, I tweeted this, Casper Labs minting their agreement NFT with the China's Blockchain Service Network right here to become the preferred blockchain for the city of Fuzhou. Casper Labs is set to power part of China's state-backed NFT network to support the legal issuance of NFTs in mainland China. The Fuzhou chain will run as one of the 10 BSN Open Permission Blockchains, or OPBs. And unlike cryptocurrencies, China has not banned NFTs. So with China not being a fan of cryptocurrencies whatsoever, it is good that they're giving them a stamp of approval and at least partnering with some of these organizations. Next up for Hedera, we have Shift Markets launches on Hedera to provide yield and asset trading to enterprise clientele. Shift Markets, the enterprise tech provider, announced their product Shift dashboard to bring Hedera-based assets and yield to their wide variety of clients. I was watching an MMA fight the other day and I saw HBAR Foundation advertising behind them too. And Shift will now offer trading, payments, and yield earning opportunities to its 70 plus exchanges and other Web3 clientele. We have Nexus will first integrate Hedera, making HBAR available to the Shift Enterprise clients as well as retail users. And the Shift team has consistently proven itself as a global network of the highest standard, launching 100 foreign exchange brokers, 70 plus exchanges on six continents. And this came after Aberdeen, one of the largest UK asset managers with over 508 billion pounds, and that is still over 600 billion US dollars, has joined the Hedera Governing Council. This puts them alongside 27 companies on the council, including Google, Boeing, we have DBS Bank, one of the largest in Singapore, Deutsche Telekom, and Ubisoft. Now I saw this as well, we have Binance US to acquire bankrupt crypto exchange Voyager's assets for $1 billion, weeks after the planned FTX deal has failed. So it looks like Binance US will acquire right here Voyager in a $1.02 billion deal. Also wanted to share by Mike here, we have BMW is coming to the metaverse. The company has applied to trademarks for its logo right here. NFT authenticated media and files, virtual vehicles, clothing, footwear, retail stores for virtual vehicles and clothing, and virtual environments. So BMW is one of the largest German automobile manufacturers, and I'm guaranteeing that their competitors are going to be following suit as well. Because remember, one of the biggest brands in the world, Nike, became the highest earnings brand for NFT sales. So we can see Nike right here brought the company's revenue to $185 million. I guarantee you that these brands are building some NFT plans and roadmaps for the future because during the next bull run, there is always money to be made. Also saw Hedera ready to bring Web3 to the forefront of the conversation at Davos, the World Economic Forum that will be taking place in January. So they're going to be discussing some carbon negative solutions. We can see Avery Dennison, DLA Piper, ServiceNow, and Standard Bank. And let's finish up with this. We have head of research over at Uphold, Dr. Martin. So blockchain for government services could include legal enforcements, legislation records, bills and payments, welfare distribution, digitized ID or DIDs, healthcare services, cyber protection, security and safety, and taxation. So these are blockchain government use cases. Not a big fan by any means, but just wanted to show you some of the utility of these networks. We also have blockchain statistics you must know. $1.76 trillion is how much blockchain will boost global GDP by 2030. Now the projected blockchain market value in 2020 was $3 billion. Three. And it's projected that the blockchain market value in 2025 will be $39.7 billion. We're talking about growth by a factor of 13.2, so 13.2 times larger than just 2020. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate hitting the like button and subscribing. Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, my link tree is linked right in the top of this YouTube video description with all links, crypto resources, and discounts. I'll catch you in the next one.